So welcome to our latest tutorial and this tutorial will be mainly explaining how we can um, use textures and photos in our architectural visualization design. So especially for an architect and you're designing, photos are a great way to get you started. Now I'll show you just our base of where we started and from that base we come to this. Now this Photoshop file will also be available for download in our Archi9Learn website. Now remember, we'll be using mostly photographs from these photo packs that you can download completely free of charge. And for a small charge, we're also going to have this file for download. And that's through Gumroad. So you'll see all the links below. Now let's get started. And I hope you enjoy what we've come up with for this tutorial. So earlier last year, I had the opportunity to um, have a trip to the Philippines and really explore. and. As usual, I always like to take my camera and I think this this kind of sketch phase that we're at and um, let's remember this is kind of the beginning of something. There's, a, uh, there's quite a few things that are still not perfect as we can see here, here that are sketchy. But I always like to bring my camera and my camera is a great thing because it lets me have a look at everything, kind of understand um, how light works in certain places, understand that the environment is different in every single country. And this is a photo from Singapore, Singapore, Philippines, Philippines, and really to, to understand how, especially the light works in the tropics. And that's where I kind of came up with this idea. So let's just have a look at the raw render. As you can see, the raw render, again, as you know, the raw render is just uh, the starting point and we can manipulate everything we want to. So what happened? Let's start with the, the image. Now, I'll turn off the photos and the grade, and this is basically once you have the sky in, uh, once you have your basic depth and an idea of where you want to go, I start to look at forms. Now, forms are a great way of kind of understanding how a picture works. So I like to kind of move things around, just press R, and kind of rotate and start to understand how things work. Now, I'll show you a bit of my development sketches. Uh, there is one important thing, which are kind of the power lines to understand what are the lines that are most important in a visual and how this kind of works. Now, I want to guide my eye around this central part, but I want to create a story and a composition that really leads my eyes. And again, we're using uh, visualization here as a tool to express an idea. So we're not looking for a final visual, we're looking for an idea. Now, the best way to go about this is to use photos. Uh, photos are so simple, so quick. You don't need to, to work too much on them. And really, um, they give you a very quick understanding once you have your sketch and your power lines uh, of, of how things work. Now, we've developed something at Arc9 Visualization and Arc9 Learn, which is this use of photos. And if you look on our website, Arc9 Learn, you can go into your downloads and download photo packs, absolutely free. And if you just click on one of them, uh, for instance, download, you'll go to Gumroad and you can download your photo packs there for free, or if you wanna donate, however you prefer. But anyway, let's look at these photos. So I understood very early that there was a need for this, this, kind, of, uh, this kind of edge placement, uh, edge composition that really kind of kept our eye in this middle bit, but also framed everything. So I'll switch on the grade. And if you see, uh, I brought in one of the photos from that photo pack, and I believe you can find it in the photo pack. Uh, let's just drag this across and drag it in. Now, again, I mean, the color is not perfect. Uh, the the color the levels they're they're all imperfect but what i'm looking for is kind of to understand very quickly if this works now let me take this out of the foot just switch this around and take this out of the photos so i'm trying again to kind of really work this up as a as a tool and i can you know overlay to see just how it works and I can start then to really start to, to bring things to how I want them. So I can warp it, I can make it work as if whatever I prefer. And this is a really great tool in visualization to really get you kind of going and really understanding how your photographs can work for you. And you'll notice that it's very quick because I'm looking at composition. I'm not looking at, you know, developing this. And as an architect, 
uh, at the beginning, you're kind of trying to sketch out ideas and many architects are working with very basic models from SketchUp or whatever have you. And this is the basics of, uh, of, of starting to sketch out. And you'll see this in a lot of competition visuals. So again, you know, we've already gotten our kind of initial initial feeling for it. I mean, the next thing would be to bring down your hue saturation. So control H, levels. And we, we're kind of getting there. So as you can see, I'll turn that back on. And this is what we came up with. So I'll switch all the other ones off. I'll kind of guide you through them and we can see just how they were set up. So pavement. So as you can see, that was basically the first thing we got to. Now, as we move through the scene, um, we're always kind of looking at composition. So let's rotate this around. Remember, it's very important to give us a fresh perspective on what's happening. So. As you can see, I've rotated that around. Now, even if you don't know how to draw, there's always a great way to get about it. And that's looking at forms. And Photoshop gives us some great tools, uh, if you look at the shapes. And if we start to think about things as the most basic elements uh, as forms, we can really start to, to create something new. Now, as you can see, uh, that's, that's already kind of giving us a, a somewhat intuitive way of doing it. So let's, let's just, I can even hue saturate it. So it's a little more towards where I want it to, um, a little more towards the greens. And as you can see, this is a very, very intuitive way and it's kind of still reinforcing the idea that we want with our center point here. Now, as you can see, I'll probably redo this again. Uh, and let's just try and bring that up and bring that below that one. So it could be reinforcing that line. I'm already starting to look at that and I haven't even drawn I'm kind of just blocking stuff out now one of the blocks I did really like um, and as I kind of start to bring these blocks together and I'll just move these all up it really gives me a good idea of how I want to recreate those uh, those textures and what I can bring in so as you can see I'm not really yet drawing anything but I've already got a somewhat of an idea of how things should work and that's a great thing about forms and, and photographs and how we can use them to complement. Now, one of the ideas I had with this was kind of have this, this oval overhang and really extending this over. And again, you know, I'm looking into the architecture here. I'm not really looking in, I'm looking into the architecture and the image. So I'm not really looking into a kind of a photo real aspect and I'm looking more to kind of complement our ideas and, and to get that landscape design. And as architects, you, you really, look forward to the idea and then in the end you can create uh, whatever visual you want so again you know I can start to look into this as kind of this dome that reaches out but this was too far-fetched so anyway let's continue on so I found these basic forms and I'll switch them off right now and I'll show you uh, exactly what was done so basically using those forms we have our first one we have our second one that which was the grass and as you can see it's basically a form and I still haven't done any grass special grass uh, brushes or anything and here we are another photo and I'll just switch that on as you can see the photo and I basically just control T just uh, walk, and just walk that now one thing I can still see and I've just had a bit of light uh, I can still see that um, this is not working quite right yet so when I was uh, drawing this out, um, let's just stop that. Sometimes you have these problems with brushes. You just never select the right one. Anyway, let's sample that, a nice green, and let's make this brush big. Now this is, for, for those of you who follow these tutorials, um, you'll notice that brushes are not really the most important thing. And I think these ones were from Jonas Deroe, and you've heard me talk about this in the past. But um, they're a very basic set, and I'll put the link below, but they, they work great. You really don't need anything else. But yeah, I mean, from a visual point of view, I start to understand that we need something there to stop our eye going away and to really focus. Although we're looking at the architecture, we're still creating an image. So let's function with that image the best we can. So as I kind of started to understand it needed something there, 
and I needed something here to stop my eye, I found this really great image that really complements it really well uh, from Gobo Tree. So I just, again, leveled it and color balance. And as you can see in our people tutorial, uh, if you look into our tutorials, uh, there's basically three things, which is uh, your values, your colors, and your highlights. And this kind of had more or less the right lighting. Again, it's very basic. We're looking at something quick just to, to get it out and to show the client. And just a couple of overlays uh, from a photo. And I think this is actually from my hometown. And I'll just put that into normal so you can have a look. Uh, delete that layer mask, bring that up. And as you can see, that's kind of just to give a little bit of noise and visual noise to that terrain. So I started to build a little more of the pavement and reinforce this idea of this slope that goes around. And this kind of what it does is really reinforce what we have here on the right, on this canopy. Now this canopy, again, we can do lots with it. We, we can start to look at it as these overhangs and this ivy that's hanging down. And I think this, this would be rather cool to have this nice ivy that really drops down. And we're really looking into the tropics now. Now that makes me go into our photo sessions and our photos that we have downloaded from Marky9. Uh, probably, let's look at the photo pack. Now let's bring out that photo pack. And again, this is just a couple of photos. Um, so this is not actually the full photo. So I'm just looking at something that really has what I believe will help out with, uh, with what we want to portray. So this kind of seems to work uh, and it doesn't want to work with me. So let's crunch that down a little bit. And I think this, let's put it on overlay. Uh, just to see where it, where it ends up and to see we want to kind of match this density so you don't you want to match the scale and density and I think that works now let's take that off let's put that onto normal and let's just control I make a mask and let's look at maybe an ivy brush now I'm trying to find an ivy brush, uh, so I'm doing this in real time, so I'm going to pause it and try to find something. So I seem to have found one that seems to work, so let's just break it down, make that smaller. Just get our general gist. So as you can see, I'm kind of just drawing loosely, I'm not worry too much about scale, or just kind of trying to understand if that will work. And as you can see, it, it seems to work, but doesn't fit. Um, doesn't seem to fit just yet, so it might be a bit overboard. So unlock that and see if we can kind of change that. No, that really is not our best work, but what it can do. And now I'm going to just clone stamp it over here and make sure I don't have all layers, but kind of layers. So clone stamp, for those of you who don't know, is this one. So I'm trying to see where we can kind of match up. And now I'm going back into our back into our layer. And I would probably build this up. I know it's not the most perfect at the moment, so I'd really look to kind of perfect that a little more and make that a little nicer. Maybe it just needs some shadow behind it. So it's some shadow. Or we can just drop shadow. Uh, not the best at the moment, but anyway, it gives you a kind of idea of, uh, of using photos and how we can use it. We can even probably connect that, copy it, connect it, and put it to the screen to bring out some highlights. So let me get rid of that. Uh, let's try and put that on the screen. Control I. Uh, 
and just brush, brush into it. You brush in those highlights. Now, not the best, but it's sketchiness and kind of getting there at the moment. And if we start to, to look in this type of um, this type of, uh, of way of doing things, we can really start to understand. We, we can really use photos to really complement uh, what we're working on. And if I look on the left, uh, I found this picture. And again, same thing. I can just drag that over. Just drag that over. Crunch it down. And just try and make that work for me. And if I bring out this shape, I can really start to understand, okay, that's the shape, general shape I want. Let's bring that into our photos folder. Mask that off and start to paint, find a nice brush, and start to paint. If we're not in a rush to mask, start to paint around and really, I mean, we could mask this off really nicely, or we could find a nice leaf brush. And we can start to get the idea of what we're working with. So now you've really started to understand how we can use photographs to, to really build up our scenes and to you know quickly sketch around. We don't have to be doing these in 3D, back, forward, back, forward. It's all about trying to translate our ideas very quickly. So here we go. And um, this is our final product. Uh, I guess it's not completely final, but this is basically where we got to. And after I developed it a little more, this is more or less what I created and what I thought would be looking really nice. You'll notice a bit of the ivy changed. Uh, I'll give you the file with the nice ivy. Um, added a little bit of purple to give it just a, a little touch of, of color and kind of color harmony. And this is basically what we came up with. Uh, some people from Gobo Tree. Um, and yeah, just a nice composition and just kind of making these nice Zaha forms starting to work and you, you can't get this wrong. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed what we've come up with. Uh, remember, you can grab this from our Archive Learn website. Uh, and as you can see, it's not up yet, but you can grab this PSD file and follow through with it and also grab a few of the photo packs all for free. Now, courses will start to be up, but just go to the photo packs and you can see the photo packs and you can download these free of charge there will be a charge on the psd to keep us going and to keep producing if you've enjoyed it so i hope to see you next time i hope you've enjoyed this one and yeah feel free to recommend or or even kind of come up with some crazy ideas that you might want us to explore for the next tutorials and thank you uh, it's been a pleasure i'm pedro fernandez from archi9 visualization archi9 learn and thank you very much. See you next time. So welcome to our next tutorial. And today we're going to be talking about something super interesting, which is skies, mood, and lighting.